So we left off last time with part B, which you should have graphed, right? And the vertex for part B is a positive 1 and a negative 3. So that's a positive 1 and a negative 3. That's our vertex. Uh, next, we check to see if it opens upward or downward. There's a positive 5. That means it opens upward. It's positive. It's happy. And the third, we're going to see if it's narrow or wide. And we, we pretty much do that by doing these cheap points, right? So from this, I'm going to go, let's see. I'm going to go one over and I'm going to go five up. One, two, three, four, five. And then I go one over, one, two, three, four, five. And why am I going five up, Mr. Over? Because that's the number that's right there. So we always go, it's five over one, right? It's like it's it's like a bootleg slope, okay? Even though it really isn't. So again, a lot of what we're showing you is very bootleg, but it works, okay? We're going to go ahead and then connect these points, and we're done. That's ugly. It looks like a mouse. Okay. No offense to any mice lovers out there. Now, for those of you that are like, like doubting the validity of the bootleg methods that I teach, well, let's re-graph this with Desmos, right? So here it is, graphed by Desmos, and you'll notice that this is a, if I click on here and I drag along, here's a vertex, 1, negative 3, which is what we said it was, right? And then remember those two bootleg points I told you to make up, those, those cheap ones that we just kind of like went 1 over and 5 up? Well, check it. Here's one of them, and here's the other one. Oops. Haha. -ha. Oops. Right? And those are the same ones that we had before. So it's all bootleg, but I mean, it worked really nicely. Okay? Now, the understanding of the, of the graphing is, is very important. So this is what we had, right? The, we, we found the vertex, step one. We found, that, was, that was a math, finding the vertex. And then we decided if it opens upward or downward based on that A, the sign of A. And then we go ahead and we decide if it's narrow or wide based on those cheap points. And I, incidentally, if you look back at problem three, uh, part B, when it asks for the value of A and how it affects the graph, then that's when it talks about it being narrow or wide and, and what kind of numbers affect that. C, we have a vertex of negative one, positive one. That's step one, negative one, positive one. Next, uh, I'm just going to open upward because it's positive. I know it's a decimal. It's a small number between 0 and 1, but hey, it's positive. And so we're going to go 1 over. We're going to go 0 0.3 up. So that's only a third of the way. So I'm going to eyeball it to here. And here I go 1 over and go eyeball it up to a third of the way. We connect those three in, the, in, a, in a curve U shape, and I totally did not even connect those. There's something like that. And so we actually ha find ourselves having a very wide opening parabola for part C. Part D, the vertex is positive one, positive one, great. So we put it right there, there's our vertex, that's our, our point. What is the A value? Please don't tell me it's zero. Because you know from problem three that if A is zero, we don't have a parabola, we have something else, okay? Um, the A value is one, there's a one in front. So, this means I'm going to go one over to the right and then go one up, one over to the left and then go one up, and then connect those. And it's going upward, and that's my parabola. This method of graphing is probably faster than Desmos because if you put the power wrong or you forget to do something, it just doesn't work out. So, hey, this is really fast. Part E. Uh, we're missing the k value. Well, if you are, then put a zero. So that you, you have my permission to make that a zero if you want. Okay. And so it's always good for us to express things in terms of the vertex form, right? So always make it look like this. And if it's missing something, pop it in. So like in, in D, there was no way, so we put a one, right? In E, there's no k, so we can put a zero for that. Now, our vertex is positive 1, 0. So if I put that, 
positive 1, 0 is right here. And then it's uh, 2, so it's going to be opening upward, right? It's a positive number, so it opens upward. And if I'm going to do my cheap points, I go 1 over, and then I go 2 up. Then I go 1 over, and I go 2 up. And this is my parabola. As the a values get bigger, the parabola gets more narrow. F is the simplest type of parabola, yet it looks so difficult. So let's rewrite this in vertex form. It would look like this. 1x minus 0 plus 0. How do I know, Mr. Over? Well, look, I mean, if, you, if there's no 0, there's no 0, right? And if there's no 0, then this is squared. And if x is squared, well, x is squared. And if there's no 1, there's no 1. So we're just showing you that we could just write this in a more comfortable-looking manner so that you have an easier time using the vertex form to graph. Um, teachers would usually begin with this equation for graphing, and they would, have, they would call this what's called a mother function, and then they would go ahead and have you use a t-chart with x and y values, and then from that, they would go ahead and, and um, have you create other functions and then have you change things from there. I kind of worked it backwards. So let's go ahead and graph this. The vertex is going to be 0, comma 0. It's actually right here. And uh, the, it's a 1, right? It's opening upward. Okay. And we always go 1 over. But because of this number, I'm going to go 1 up. 1 over. One up. Connect them. I missed. Dang it. It looks like a animal or something. Part G is looking something like this. If we write it in vertex form. So it has a K because it doesn't have, it's not inside the parentheses. That's the K value. So the H value is going to be zero. And then the A value is going to be a one. So the vertex is going to be zero comma positive one right here it's a one so we always go one over and then we're gonna go one up one over one up connect I missed again <laughs> done I'm so done with myself really take a moment to really understand what am I doing here with you know parts E F G and H when I when I rewrite them in vertex form really take a moment to understand what I'm doing Try to convince yourself that you understand, that it makes sense, okay? Because it, it makes it all really easy. If you're planning to do the assignments with Desmos, you know I'm going to ask you questions about how to graph it, not about what the graph is. Because I'm trying to get you to prove to me that you understand the material. I don't care about answers. I care about your understanding. So please take some time to consider understanding how am I able to make part H, for example, look like this and what benefits do we have from making it look like this so based on this the vertex is 0 comma 0 so it's right here and it's 6 right so I always go 1 over and I'm going to go 6 up 1 over and 6 up this is a very narrow I missed no surprise there this is a very narrow um, parabola So how do I know if, if a quadratic has a maximum or a minimum? Obviously, we could graph it, but we don't have to graph it. We could just look at the equation, and we could know instantly if there's a maximum or minimum. No math guaranteed. We just look, and we're done. So the maximum or minimum depends on the leading coefficient. The leading coefficient is pretty much the A value. And we're not even care about the a value. We care about the sine of a. So if a is positive, it's going to be a minimum. And if a is negative, it's a maximum. Why? Because we said if a is positive, it opens upward, right? And so if it opens upward, that means there's a minimum. If a is negative, it opens downward. And if it's opening downward, for example, that means it has a maximum. So is this, is this chill? Look at this. Positive or negative? Positive. It has a minimum. Done. <laughs> B. Well, it has a negative. 
That means the maximum. Done. That's it, Mr. Dodge said. Why are you trying to make it so hard? It, it doesn't have to be hard. Okay, so this one, positive or negative. Therefore, it has a min. I can't do fractions, Mr. Over. I know you can, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> so is this positive or negative? If it's negative, then it has a maximum. Now, let's be careful. It's not the first number you see. It's the A value. It's the number in front of the X squared term. So with E, we're not looking at the 4. Nobody cares about that. Or this. This is the A value right here. This negative 2. Okay, yeah, I'm being tricky here. So the negative 2, it's negative. That means E has a maximum. F, this is the number that matters. The other numbers don't. This is a value because it's in front of the x squared. This is a positive value, so it has a minimum. And finally, with g, again, we're looking at this number right here. It's negative, so it has a maximum.